Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction. And I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did. In this particular video, I'm going to introduce four characters. One creature, two heroes, and one anti-hero. And I'll try all that I can to make this work for all of you guys watching. Just bear with me, please. Here's the first one I'm going to introduce, the creature. Octocrab. Real name, none. Height, 184 feet. Weight, 95 tons. Status, villain, and lone resident of the Lake of Tears. Base, Lake of Tears, Wonderland. Intelligence, one and a half brains. Behavior. Bloodthirsty, sneaky, and horrific. He'll do anything to cure its hunger for as long as needed. Lethality, as above. Weaknesses. It hates loud noises. Powers. He has great size and strength, sharp claws and teeth, tentacles, and a strong shell. It has a pair of antennae used to sense the movement of its prey. Eyes, blood red. Hair, none. Origin. At the loss of the White Queen, Alice One unintentionally made a bottomless lake from a single tear, which doesn't dry in summer or freeze in winter. Eventually, the Lake of Tears had somehow manifested its only known resident, the Octocrab. Since then, all the Wonderlandians would think twice before visiting the lake, because the Octocrab is the second worst threat for Wonderland, just beneath the diabolical Jabberwocky. Costume. It has a shell that protects it from most forms of damage. Teams, solitary. Original inspiration, octopi and crabs. The next one I'm going to introduce is one that's inspired from another classic fairy tale, and I hope you guys understand and such. Here it is. Bean. Real name? Bean Plant. Height? 2 million feet. Weight? Unrevealed. Status? Hero and leader of the Bean Corps. Base? Missouri, USA, Mobile. Intelligence? Three brains. Behavior? Witty, flirtatious, and compassionate. She'll do anything to both protect the innocents and her destined soulmate. Lethality? Only by accident or if angered. Weaknesses. She only gets her energy from sunlight and water. Powers. She has immense size and strength, uncanny reasoning skills, and possesses an innocent soul. Eyes. Deep green. Hair. Deep black. And shoulder length. Origin. Jason Plant was an ordinary young adult who wanted nothing more but to have the perfect spouse. One day... He found a magic bean that whispered that it can change via a wish into anything he desired. Jason then took it back to his farm and planted it in the soil, wishing for the most unique and willing lover possible. That night, he had a dream about his wedding day, and before he saw the face of his bride, he, wo he woke up from a surprise shout from his mother. Jason went down to the back of door of the house and found that his mom met a young girl who stood tall enough to have her scalp in the cloud line. Admitting that her name is Bean, she explained to Jason that she is his intended lover. She then took him on a walk to Chicago, despite that Jason wasn't used to her elevation yet. While there, Bean got thirsty and chose to drink a sip of Lake Michigan. Just a sip. Despite all the commotion, Jason had over time gotten used to Bean, and soon accepted her as a spouse. A few months later, Jason and Bean went through their wedding ceremony, and later traveled to Modesto for a successful honeymoon. Costume. She wears a gray t-shirt, dark blue skinny jeans, and gray sneakers. Teams. Solitary or with other heroes. Portal inspiration. Jack's Beanstalk. 
The next one I'm going to introduce is another example of an imperfect counterpart. Here it is. P. Real name, none. Height, 2 million feet. Weight, unrevealed. Status, anti-hero and ally of being. Base, quirky dimension, mole. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior, loopy yet protective. She always enjoys helping others. Lethality, only by accident or during a fight. Weaknesses, low IQ and rejection. Powers, she possesses similar powers as B. Eyes, deep green. Hair, light black and scruffy. Origin, in the quirky dimension, the native bean is rather an imperfect duplicate of her known only as P. One day, P decided to travel to the default dimension by a portal in order to try something new in her life. Eventually, she encountered Bean who asked her to help with a mission involving the manufactured bean board. And after a time of struggling, they were finally able to defeat her. Nowadays, P would spend part of her time as a member of the Bean Corps, despite that Bean Borg is occasionally involved. Costume. She wears similar clothes as Bean. Teams. Solitary with the Bean Corps and others. Original inspiration. Bean and DC Bizarro. The last character I'm going to introduce is something potent, as far as I know, even though... It's obvious that they're all unique. That's just a given. Just forget I said anything. Sorry. Quantum Girl. Real name? Sharon Miller II. Height? 9 feet 7.5 inches. Weight? 372 pounds. Status? Hero and daughter of Quantum. Base? The Sky Fortress. Alpha Earth Mobile. Intelligence? 3.5 brains to 5 brains and a plus. Behavior. Optimistic and willful. She'll do anything to help her mother. Lethality. Highly dangerous, but only when angered or during a fight. Weaknesses. She has a severe intolerance to quantumite. Powers. She has the same power as powers as her mother, though her powers are far more intense by comparison. Eyes. Sky blue. Hair. Platinum white and shoulder length. Origin. At one point, Quantum and Larry Dirks ended up having a daughter of their own, who they decided to name both Sharon and Quantum Girl. Eventually, Quantum used a machine from Pym that would rapidly age her into a late adolescent, just to help her daughter with independence. One day, Olga was making another rampage in New York, and Quantum decided to introduce Quantum Girl to her trademark enemy. When they finally arrived to stop her, Olga at first thought that she was hallucinating. Quantum and Quantum Girl were able to defeat the tyrant. Since then, Quantum Girl was marked as a new hero, and would sometimes take her mother's place as the leader of the Alpha Trio whenever, whenever her mother is busy with other objectives. Costume. She wears the same clothes as her mother. Teams solitary with her mother and other heroes. Or transpiration, Quantum. Well, those are the four things I'm going to introduce to you guys, and I also have to tell you guys something sacred, like legitimately sacred. Fourteen years ago, in March 27, 2009 AD, I first learned of Susan Murphy, John Ormond. I at first thought that she would be another face, but I realized from learning from her that she's something different. She had such a pure, innocent soul, and such beauty of sorts, but she was treated so morbidly by so many different interferences. I vowed the rest of my life to make sure that she feels happy and I'll go to any lengths to make her feel like she matters because she does matter to everyone. Today is my 14th anniversary with her. 
and I hope that you guys understand how much I care for her, because out of all things in existence, she means the most, no questions asked. Throughout my entire existence as a fictionologist, I have cherished her soul. I just wanted to help her feel like she deserved to be, because there are some times where she feels like she didn't matter, but she always does matter. I just... I refuse to be selfish, because if I ever was, she would never forgive me. And... Let me ask you guys this question. How far would you go to make things better? What sacrifices are you willing to make for the sake of those you care for in life? When it comes to your beloved, how far would you go to show to them that they matter to you? I just hope that things work out well in the long run, not just for my Leviathan universe, but everything, because... Sometimes I feel it's like a collision course of sorts. Thank you, everyone, for watching my podcast so far. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. You don't have to. Once again, I'm Leviathan. Hope you guys have a fine rest of the month and such, and have a fine... April Fool's Day and so forth, and until next time, in transmission.